Samantha Ray's heels clicked against the marble floor as she strode down the echoing hallway of Montclair Manor, the sprawling ancestral estate that had become both her gilded cage and her battlefield. Portraits of stern-faced ancestors lined the walls, their eyes seeming to follow her every move with silent judgment. The weight of their stares of the expectations and machinations that came with the Montclair name pressed down on her like a physical force. She paused before the imposing mahogany door at the end of the hall, drawing in a steadying breath. Beyond that threshold lay the opulent dining room where her family, both blood and newly minted through her mother's recent marriage, waited to did dig into far more than the sumptuous dinner laid out on the antique table. No, their appetites ran to the cruel and cunning, and Samantha was the main course. Squaring her shoulders, she ran a hand over the deep green silk of her gown, armor chosen with care for this nightly battle of wills and wits. She couldn't afford a single chink, a single misstep. Not with adversaries as ruthless as the Montclairs, especially her new stepsister, Olivia. Samantha's fingers tightened involuntarily, remembering the cold smile that had curved Olivia's scarlet lips as she'd cornered Samantha in the garden just hours before. Bastard's daughter, she'd hissed, venom dripping from each syllable. You don't belong here. And I'll make sure father sees that, one way or another. The words, sharp as the thorns on the rose bushes boxing them in, hadn't been a surprise. Olivia had made no secret of her disdain from the moment Samantha and her mother had stepped into their new life at Montclair Manor. But there had been something more in her eyes today. Something calculating and triumphant like a cat toying with a doomed mouse. A chill traced Samantha's spine. What did Olivia know? What new scheme was she plotting? There was only one way to find out. Stealing herself, Samantha turned the brass knob and stepped into the lion's den. They were all assembled around the long, gleaming table, her mother and new stepfather at the heads, Olivia and her brother Declan on one side, and at Olivia's right hand, him, him, Alexander St. James, Olivia's dashing fiancé and the one chink in Samantha's armor that could prove fatal because from the moment their eyes had met across this very table her first night at Montclair Manor, she'd been fighting a losing battle against the forbidden desire burning between them. A desire that could consume her whole and destroy everything in its wake. As if drawn by her thoughts, his piercing blue gaze locked onto hers now, a wealth of heat and unspoken longing in their depths a longing that echoed her own, no matter how hard she fought to deny it. How long could they keep this dangerous secret? How long before it exploded, shattering the facade of civility and laying waste to the tenuous peace she'd brokered within these walls? Olivia's knowing smirk, sharp as a blade, said it wouldn't be long at all. And then the real games would begin. As Samantha took her seat, the first course laid before her with practiced flourishes by the liveried staff, she knew one thing with crystal uncertainty. By the time the last dish was cleared, someone's blood would stain the pristine damask tablecloth. She could only pray it wouldn't be hers. Dinner was an exquisite torture, each course more delectable than the last. But Samantha barely tasted the succulent roast duck or the delicately seasoned potatoes, her attention consumed by the charged undercurrent swirling around the table. Every clink of silverware against bone china felt like the ticking of a bomb, seconds counting down to an inevitable detonation. Her mother, resplendent in a gown of shimmering gold that matched her honeyed locks, laughed airily at something her new husband murmured in her ear. The adoring smile she turned on him held no trace of the grief that had haunted her eyes since Samantha's father passed a decade prior. Samantha's heart clenched, an old ache beneath her breastbone. She wanted to be happy for her mother, happy that she'd found love and security again. But in this house of cards, that security felt as flimsy as the crystal stemware lined up like soldiers before her. Her gaze flicked to her stepfather, Reginald Montclair, the man her mother had married after a whirlwind courtship just three months prior. He cut an imposing figure at the head of the table, his salt-and-pepper hair and aquiline features seeming chiseled from the same unforgiving stone as his sprawling manner. When those sharp eyes, pale as a winter sky, met hers, she had the unsettling sensation of being weighed and measured. Of being found wanting. 
And how are you settling in, Samantha? He asked, his voice a rich baritone that commanded attention. I trust you're finding everything to your liking? Samantha swallowed past the sudden tightness in her throat, her grip tightening on the delicate stem of her wine glass. Of course, she replied, her smile brittle. Your home is lovely. I'm so grateful for your generosity in welcoming my mother and me into your family. Olivia, stunning in a gown of deepest crimson that matched the shade he'd painting her lips, leaned forward, elbows on the table, in a calculated show of insolence. Yes, we're all so grateful, she purred, her voice dripping with false sweetness. It's not every day we get to welcome a charity case into our midst. I'm sure the servants are just thrilled at the extra work. Samantha's cheeks burned, but she kept her smile fixed firmly in place. She wouldn't give Olivia the satisfaction of seeing her ruffled. I assure you, I'm more than happy to pitch in. I wouldn't want to be a burden. Declan, Olivia's twin in both looks and manner, snorted into his wine glass. A bit late for that, isn't it? Declan, Alexander cut in sharply, setting down his fork with a cling. That's uncalled for. Samantha and Victoria are part of this family now. We should all be making an effort to ensure they feel welcomed. His gaze met Samantha's across the table, blue eyes blazing with an intensity that stole her breath. Anything less would be unbecoming of the Montclair name. A muscle ticked in Reginald's jaw, but he merely inclined his head. Well said, Alexander. We're all adjusting to this new chapter. Patience and understanding are key. The warning in his tone was unmistakable, and a tense silence fell over the table. Samantha risked a glance at her mother, hoping for a hint of support, but Victoria's attention remained fixed on her new husband, her expression placid. Disappointment, bitter as wormwood, flooded Samantha's mouth. Since marrying Reginald, it was as if her mother had been replaced by a perfect porcelain doll, smiling prettily and mouthing all the right words, but vacant behind the eyes. Suddenly, the dining room felt suffocating, the air thick with cloying perfume and unspoken animosity. May I be excused? She asked abruptly. The words ripped from her throat. I'm feeling a bit unwell. Too much rich food, I think. It was a flimsy excuse, but she couldn't bear another second under the weight of their collective scrutiny. Reginald's brow furrowed, but he gave a curt nod. Of course. Rest up. We have a busy day tomorrow. I'd like you and Olivia to accompany me to the club. It's time we introduced you to society. The thought of being paraded before his wealthy cronies, another bauble to add to his collection, made her stomach twist. But she merely nodded, pushing back her chair and rising on unsteady legs. Alexander half rose as well, his expression torn. Let me escort you. That won't be necessary. Samantha cut in, her heart pounding a staccato rhythm against her ribs. If he touched her, even innocently, she feared she might shatter completely. I can manage. Ignoring Olivia's knowing smirk and the weight of Alexander's stare boring into her back, she fled the room as quickly as decorum allowed. But she barely reached the sanctuary of her bedchamber, the door clicking shut behind her, when a tentative knock sounded. Hard in her throat, she cracked it open to reveal Alexander, his chiseled features drawn with concern. I just wanted to make sure you were all right, he murmured. Samantha's fingers tightened on the door handle, the urge to throw herself into his arms nearly overwhelming. But she couldn't give in to this madness. Couldn't let the simmering attraction between them boil over and scald everyone in its path. I'm fine, she whispered. Please, you shouldn't be here. If... Olivia saw. To hell with Olivia, he growled, the expletive sending a shiver down her spine. Slowly, giving her every chance to pull away, he raised a hand to cup her cheek. His skin was warm, his touch achingly gentle. I can't keep pretending, Samantha. Can't keep acting like I don't feel this. This pull between us. Her breath caught, the air suddenly too thick to draw into her lungs. Distantly, she knew she should push him away, slam the door in his face, and bolt it tight. But some reckless, hungry part of her yearned to drag him inside instead, to lose herself in his touch and damn the consequences. Alexander. A crash sounded from the depths of the house, 
followed by a blood-curdling scream. They froze, gazes locked, the forbidden moment shattered. Then, hearts pounding, they raced towards the sound, dread nipping at their heels like hellhounds. They arrived in the foyer to find the family gathered around a crumpled figure in a spreading crimson pool. For a horrifying moment, the red dress and unmistakable sable hair made Samantha think it was Olivia sprawled there. But then the figure stirred, one porcelain hand fluttering weakly, and a choked sob tore from her throat. It wasn't Olivia lying broken and bleeding on the unforgiving marble. It was her mother. Time seemed to slow, each heartbeat stretching into an eternity as Samantha dropped to her knees, beside her mother's broken form, heedless of the blood soaking into her gown. With shaking fingers she brushed a lock of golden hair from Victoria's ashen face, bile rising in her throat at the sight of the gash, marring her mother's delicate temple. Mother, she choked out, tears blurring her vision. Can you hear me? Please, open your eyes. A flutter of sooty lashes, a pained moan. Then, miraculously, her mother's eyes cracked open, glassy and unfocused. Yes, Samantha. Relief, sharp and bright as a blade, pierced Samantha's chest. She wasn't too late. Her mother was alive, if only just. I'm here, she whispered fiercely. You're going to be all right. We'll get help. We'll wheel. What happened here? Reginald's sharp demand cut through the haze of panic, his polished dress shoes appearing at the edge of Samantha's tear-blurred vision. Victoria? Who did this to you? Olivia knelt at her father's side, her flawless face a mask of concern belied by the calculating glint in her eyes. The poor dear must have fallen down the stairs. You know how she gets after a few glasses of wine. Samantha's head snapped up, rage searing through her veins like wildfire. How dare you, she snarled. Can't you see she's hurt? She needs a doctor, not your vicious insinuations. Reginald held up a hand, his expression inscrutable. Calm yourself, Samantha. Olivia may be right. Your mother has seemed unsteady of late. Victoria stirred, her fingers spasming around Samantha's. Oh, no. She rasped, her voice reedy with pain. I didn't fall. I was pushed. Silence, thick and heavy as a funeral shroud, descended over the foyer. Samantha's heart seized, her eyes flying to Alexander's. He looked as stricken as she felt, his chiseled features pale beneath his tan. Pushed, he echoed, his deep voice uncharacteristically unsteady. By whom? But Victoria's eyes were drifting shut again, her grip going slack in Samantha's. Please, Samantha begged, fear a living thing clawing at her throat. She's lost so much blood. She needs a hospital. Reginald pinched the bridge of his nose, a vein throbbing at his temple. For a long moment, he simply stared down at his injured wife, inscrutable. Then, with a curt nod, he turned to bark orders at the hovering staff. Within minutes, Victoria was being carefully lifted onto a stretcher, her limp hand trailing over the edge like a fallen dove's wing. As the paramedics bore her mother away, Samantha fought the urge to crumple. She needed to be strong now, needed to find out what really happened. Her mother's life could depend on it. Rising on unsteady legs, she turned to face her stepfamily, the people who had brought such upheaval to her once-ordered world. Reginald's face was a thundercloud, his jaw tight with barely suppressed fury. Declan looked rattled, his perpetual sneer replaced by a lost expression that made him look younger, more vulnerable. And Olivia? Olivia was smiling. It was a tiny thing, just a quirk of glossy lips, but it struck Samantha like a blow. There was something knowing in that smile, something malicious and darkly triumphant. In that moment, icy certainty crystallized in her gut. Her mother's accident had been no accident at all. And Olivia, with her poisonous beauty and hidden claws, knew far more than she was letting on. Samantha's hands curled into fists, her nails biting into her palms. She would get to the bottom of this, would drag the truth into the light, no matter the cost. For her mother. For herself. Even if it meant tearing this glittering world of wealth and privilege apart with her bare hands.
Squaring her shoulders, she met Olivia's smug gaze dead on, a silent declaration of war. I think it's time we had a little chat, she said, her voice steady despite the rage and fear churning in her stomach. Somewhere private. Something flickered in Olivia's green eyes, there and gone too quick to decipher. Then she was rising gracefully to her feet, smoothing down the skirts of her bluttered gown. Of course, she purred, slipping her arm through Samantha's as if they were the dearest of friends. Lead the way. Samantha didn't miss the way Alexander and Declan tensed, or the reproachful look Reginald shot his daughter. But she merely inclined her head, allowing Olivia to guide her up the grand staircase, each step feeling like a march to the gallows. At the landing, she paused, looking back over her shoulder. Her gaze snagged on Alexander, standing forlorn and stricken in the foyer below. The urge to go to him to seek solace in his arms was nearly overwhelming. But she couldn't afford such weakness. Not now. Stealing herself, she turned away and let Olivia lead her deeper into the serpent's den, shadows swallowing them whole. The door to Olivia's opulent bedchamber clicked shut behind them with a finality that sent a shiver down Samantha's spine. She turned slowly, her heart a wild thing beating against the cage of her ribs, to face her stepsister. Olivia lounged on the velvet chaise by the window, the picture of indolent grace. But there was nothing relaxed about the predatory gleam in her emerald eyes. So, Olivia drawled, examining her flawless crimson nails. You wanted to chat. Samantha drew in a steadying breath. The cloying scent of Olivia's signature rose perfume thick in her throat. Don't play coy, she said, proud of how level she kept her voice. We both know what this is about. My mother. Olivia's lips curved in a knife's edge smile. Ah, yes. Poor dear Victoria. Such a tragedy. Something in her tone, the mock sympathy dripping from each word, snapped the fragile thread of Samantha's control. Cut the act, she snarled, crossing the room in three quick strides to loom over her stepsister. I know you had something to do with her accident, and I'm not leaving this room until you tell me the truth. For a moment, Olivia's mask slipped a flash of something dark and ugly twisting her lovely features. Then, quick as a spark, it was gone, replaced by a throaty laugh. My, my. The kitten has claws. She rose languidly to her feet, forcing Samantha to take a step back. But you're delusional, darling. Why would I ever want to hurt your mother? We're practically family now. The word family dripped from her lips like venom, and Samantha had to fight back a shudder. Spare me, she spat. You've hated my mother from the moment she set foot in this house. Hated that she might threaten your place as mistress of the manor. S hated her? Olivia's lips curled in a sneer. Oh, Samantha, I don't waste my energy on an emotion as common as hate. Your mother is nothing to me. An annoying gnat, perhaps, but hardly worth the effort of swatting. Samantha's nails bit into her palms, the pain grounding her. If that's true, then you won't mind telling me where you were when she had her accident. Olivia's eyes narrowed, a calculating glint sparking in their viridian depths. Are you accusing me of something? Should I be? Samantha held her ground, heart pounding. Just answer the question, Olivia. A long, charged moment passed the air between them fairly crackling with tension. Then Olivia huffed a laugh, turning to pour herself a glass of Merlot from the decanter on her vanity. If you must know, I was in the conservatory. Alone. She took a long sip, her gaze never leaving Samantha's over the rim of the glass. Satisfied? No. Duh. She wasn't. Not by a long shot. But she could see by the set of Olivia's jaw, the challenge in her eyes that she wouldn't get anything more from her. Not tonight. Samantha straightened her spine, tossing her hair back. For now, she allowed. Then, softer. This isn't over, Olivia. If I find out you had anything, anything at all to do with my mother's injury. She let the unspoken threat hang in the air between them, sharp as a garrote. Something flickered in Olivia's expression, a chink in her unassailable armor. But it was gone before Samantha could parse it. 
buried beneath a veneer of icy disdain. Careful, sister dear, she purred, setting down her glass with a decisive clink. You're not in Kansas anymore. Here in Oz, wicked witches don't take kindly to baseless accusations. With that, she swept past Samantha to the door, yanking it open. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have a fiancé to attend to. You know how needy men can be. Her smile cut like a blade. Or maybe you don't. Pity that. Then she was gone in a swirl of silk and spite, leaving Samantha alone in the suffocating dimness of the chamber. For a long moment she simply stood there, fighting the urge to scream. Or cry. Or put her fist through the antique mirror leering at her from across the room. But she did none of those things. She couldn't afford to fall apart, not when her mother needed her to be strong. To find answers. Squaring her shoulders, Samantha marched from the room, purpose lending strength to her steps. Alexander met her at the base of the stairs, his eyes dark with concern. Are you all right? What did Olivia say? Nothing of use, Samantha replied grimly. But I'm more certain than ever that she's hiding something. His jaw tightened, a muscle ticking beneath the tan skin. Then we'll find out what it is. Dither. Da. Despite the gravity of the situation, a flicker of warmth bloomed in Samantha's chest at the word, together. But she tamped it down, refusing to indulge in foolish fancy. Alexander was her ally in this, nothing more. She couldn't afford the luxury of anything else. Where do we start? She asked crisply. A glint of determination hardened his gaze. The scene of the crime. There might be clues the police missed. Samantha's stomach turned at the thought of returning to that blood-stained foyer, but she merely nodded. Lead the way. They crossed the manor in tense silence, the weight of unasked questions and unspoken fears heavy between them. When they reached the top of the grand staircase, Samantha froze, her breath catching in her throat. The blood had been scrubbed away, leaving no trace of the horror that had unfolded mere hours before. But she could still see it in her mind's eye, a lurid pool spreading like a crimson tide across the gleaming marble. Alexander's hand found hers, his touch achingly gentle. We don't have to do this now, he murmured. If it's too much? She shook her head, blinking back the sting of tears. I'm fine, she said, hating the tremor in her voice. Clearing her throat, she pulled away from his grasp, ignoring the way her skin ached at the loss. Let's just, let's just look around. See if anything seems out of place. Slowly they descended the stairs, eyes scanning every inch of the foyer. Nothing seemed amiss, no signs of a scuffle or struggle. Samantha was about to suggest they check the balcony overhead when Alexander sucked in a sharp breath. Samantha. Dot den. Look. He crouched down, reaching beneath the carved leg of a spindly side table. When he withdrew his hand, a scrap of familiar crimson silk dangled from his fingers. Samantha's heart seized. That's Olivia's dress, she whispered. From dinner, their eyes met, wide with the same chilling realization. Olivia had been here, in this very spot. Somehow, a piece of her gown had been torn off, hidden in the shadows like a bloody secret. And if she'd lied about that, what other secrets was she keeping? Before either of them could form the question aloud, the front door burst open with a bang, making them both jump. Reginald strode in, his patrician features grim. When his cold gaze landed on them, Samantha felt a frisson of fear skitter down her spine. Samantha, dot, Alexander, dot. His voice was clipped, brittle as ice. We need to talk. Now, no. Samantha exchanged a loaded glance with Alexander, her heart plummeting to her toes. Somehow, she knew whatever Reginald had to say, it would change everything. The only question was, would their fledgling alliance survive the coming storm? The silence in Reginald's study was deafening, broken only by the ticking of the antique grandfather clock in the corner. Each second felt like an eternity as Samantha sat ramrod straight in the leather armchair, Alexander a tense presence at her side. Reginald paced before the roaring fireplace, his shadow stretching long and ominous across the Persian rug. I've just spoken with the doctor, 
he said at last, his voice like gravel. Victoria is in a coma. They don't know if she'll wake up. Samantha's breath left her in a rush, pain lancing through her chest as if she'd been stabbed. Beside her, Alexander made a low sound of sympathy, his hand twitching as if he longed to reach for her. But he restrained himself, and Samantha was grateful. She couldn't bear to be touched right now, not even in comfort. If she let herself feel anything, anything at all, she might fly apart. The police have ruled out foul play, Reginald continued, turning to fix them with a piercing stare. They believe Victoria's fall was an accident, the result of too much wine and an unfortunate stumble in her heels. I'm inclined to agree with them. Samantha's head snapped up, incredulity warring with fury in her breast. You can't be serious. The evidence is clear, Reginald said coldly. I know you're upset, Samantha, but wild accusations will get us nowhere. It's not a wild accusation. Samantha burst out, leaping to her feet. She couldn't sit still a moment longer, not with this inferno raging inside her. Mother said she was pushed. And we found a piece of Olivia's dress on the stairs, right where she fell. That's not a coincidence. Reginald's eyes narrowed. You went poking around the scene? Stirring up trouble on the very night of this tragedy? He shook his head, mouth twisting in disgust. I knew you were reckless, but I never took you for a fool. Alexander rose to stand at Samantha's shoulder, a bulwark against the tide of Reginald's disdain. Sir, with all due respect, I think Samantha may be onto something. If Olivia lied about her whereabouts, what? Enough. Reginald slashed a hand through the air, cutting him off. I won't hear any more of this. Olivia is not responsible for Victoria's accident, and that's final. His glacial gaze bored into Samantha, chilling her to the bone. One more word is nonsense and you'll no longer be welcome under my roof. Do I make myself clear? Samantha's hands curled into fists at her sides, nails cutting into her palms. The urge to scream, to rage against the injustice of it all was nearly overwhelming. But some small, still voice in the back of her mind whispered caution. If Reginald cast her out, banished her from the manor, she would lose any chance of finding out the truth, of getting justice for her mother. So, though it killed her, she forced her spine to bend, her head to bow. Yes, sir, she gritted out. Forgive me, I'm distraught. Reginald harumphed, but some of the tension leached from his frame. Understandable. It's been a trying night for us all. He turned back to the fire, the dismissal clear. Get some rest. Both of you. I'll let you know if there's any change in Victoria's condition. Samantha allowed Alexander to guide her from the room, his hand warm and steadying at her elbow. But the moment the study door shut behind them, she yanked free, whirling to face him. I can't believe this, she hissed, keeping her voice low lest they be overheard. He's really going to let Olivia get away with it. Just sweep it all under the rug like nothing happened? Alexander raked a hand through his hair. Frustration etched into every line of his chiseled face. I know it looks bad, but, but we have to be smart about this. If we push too hard, Reginald will make good on his threat. So what do you suggest we do? Samantha demanded. Just sit back and let Olivia win? Of course not. His eyes flashed, the blue darkening to near black. But we need proof. Irrefutable evidence that Olivia was involved. And how do you propose we get that? Samantha threw up her hands to spare a heavy weight on her shoulders. It's not like she's going to confess. A strange expression crossed Alexander's face, a blend of determination and something darker, more intense. Leave that to me. Before Samantha could question him further, he was striding away, his long legs eating up the distance. She stared after him, heart pounding. What was he planning? And why did she suddenly feel like she'd just unleashed something dangerous? Shaking off the unease, she turned towards the staircase, intending to retreat to her room and regroup. But a flash of movement caught her eye, a swirl of red silk disappearing around the corner. Olivia Dot. Samantha's feet were moving before she'd made the conscious decision to follow, instinct overriding reason. She couldn't let Olivia out of her sight, not now.
Not when she was so close to the truth. She trailed her stepsister through the darkened halls, keeping to the shadows. Olivia moved with purpose, her steps quick and light, as if she knew exactly where she was going. Samantha's unease grew with every twist and turn, the manor suddenly feeling more labyrinth than home. At last, Olivia came to a stop before a nondescript door at the end of a long, forgotten corridor. She glanced furtively over her shoulder, and Samantha flattened herself against the wall, barely daring to breathe. A beat passed. Then, Tadunai. Then, apparently satisfied she wasn't being watched, Olivia slipped through the door, closing it softly behind her. Samantha crept closer, heart in her throat. The door was plain, unremarkable, but something about it sent a shiver down her spine. Stealing herself, she reached for the handle. Locked. Of course. Frustration burned hot and bright in her veins. What was Olivia hiding in there? What secrets lay beyond that unassuming portal? She was debating the merits of picking the lock, unladylike to be sure, but desperate times and all that, when a blood-curdling scream rent the air. Samantha's heart seized, the sound chilling her to her very marrow. It was coming from behind the door. Caution abandoned, she threw herself against the unyielding wood, once, twice, a third time. On the fourth try, it burst open, sending her sprawling. She caught herself on her hands, splinters biting into her palms, and looked up. And promptly forgot how to breathe. The room was small, dimly lit by a single flickering lamp. But it was enough to illuminate the scene before her in stark, horrifying detail. Olivia lay crumpled on the floor, her crimson gown torn and stained a darker, wetter red. Blood, black in the low light, pooled around her prone form, so much of it Samantha couldn't fathom how it all came from one person. But it was the figure standing over Olivia's body that froze the scream in Samantha's throat. Alexander, she whispered, the name torn from her lips like shards of glass. He turned slowly, and the expression on his face was one she'd never seen before. Blank, die Empty? Like a mask carved from stone. In his hand, a knife glinted dully, its blade dripping with damning red. I told you to leave it to me, he said, and his voice was a stranger's, cold and flat. I told you I'd handle it. And as Samantha stared at him, paralyzed with shock and dawning horror, she realized she'd never known Alexander Asher at all. And now, it might be too late. The rain fell in sheets, drumming against the roof of the police car as it wound its way down the long, lonely road. Samantha stared out the window watching the skeletal trees flash by, their branches clawing at the leaden sky like gnarled fingers. She felt numb, hollowed out, as if all her emotions had been scraped raw and bled dry. In the seat beside her, Detective Hawkins cleared his throat his weathered face creased with sympathy. I know this has been a shock, he said gently. Finding your stepsister like that, and your fiancé. He trailed off, shaking his head. I can't imagine what you're going through. Samantha swallowed past the lump in her throat, her fingers twisting in her lap. Fiancé, daint. The word felt like a cruel joke now, a mockery of all she'd thought to be true. How could she have been so blind? So naive? I never really knew him at all, did I? She whispered, more to herself than the detective. Hawkins sighed, his eyes on the rain-slicked road. Alexander Asher was a troubled young man, he said carefully. We've uncovered evidence that suggests he was involved in some unsavory business dealings. Dealings that put him on a collision course with your stepfather. Samantha closed her eyes, fresh pain lancing through her chest. When she'd burst into that room, found Olivia bleeding out on the floor, and Alexander standing over her with a knife, she thought it couldn't get any worse. But then the truth had come spilling out, a poison that corroded everything it touched. Alexander, her Alexander, had been playing a long game, worming his way into Reginald's inner circle with the intent to destroy him. He'd seen Samantha and her mother as nothing more than pawns, pieces to be moved around the board in his twisted quest for vengeance. And Olivia. She'd been his accomplice, his lover, the bonnie to his Clyde. Together, they'd plotted to remove Victoria from the equation, 
to clear the path for their ultimate endgame. But something had gone wrong. Olivia's accident hadn't been an accident at all, but rather a double-cross Alexander tying up a loose end when she'd threatened to expose him. It was a sordid, sickening tale, one that made Samantha feel soiled down to her very soul. How could she have fallen for his lies, his honeyed words and heated touches? How could she have let herself be used so callously, so completely? Self-loathing curdled in her gut, bitter as bile. She'd thought herself so clever, so independent, but in the end, she'd been just another silly little girl, duped by a pretty face and empty promises. What will happen to him now? She asked dully, though she wasn't sure she truly wanted to know. He'll be going away for a long time, Hawkins said, a hard edge to his voice. Between Olivia's murder and the evidence we've uncovered of his other crimes, he's looking at life in prison. Maybe worse. A shudder worked its way down Samantha's spine. She should feel relieved, vindicated even. The monster had been unmasked, the nightmare over. But all she felt was a yawning emptiness, a black hole where her heart used to be. The car rolled to a stop, and she realized with a start that they'd arrived at the hospital. The place where her mother lay trapped in an endless slumber, the doctor's prognoses growing grimmer by the day. Do you want me to come in with you? Hawkins asked, his hand on the door handle. Samantha shook her head. No. Thank you. She needed to do this alone. Needed to look her mother in the face and tell her, what? That she was sorry? That she'd failed her in every possible way? Tears stinging her eyes, she stepped out into the rain, letting it soak through her thin jacket, plastering her hair to her scalp. The cold seeped into her bones, but she relished the discomfort. It made her feel something, anything, other than the crushing guilt and sorrow. The walk to her mother's room felt like a death march, each step heavier than the last. When she finally reached the door, she had to pause, bracing herself against the frame as a wave of dizziness crashed over her. How could she face this? How could she look at her mother's pale, still form, and not shatter into a million pieces? But she had to. She owed Victoria that much. Drawing in a deep, shuddering breath, she pushed open the door. And froze. The bed was empty, the sheets rumpled and twisted. The machines that had been keeping her mother alive sat silent their screens dark. Panic seized Samantha's throat, strangling the scream that bubbled up. She stumbled forward, frantically searching for the call button, for any sign of what had happened. But then a sound reached her ears, faint and muffled, coming from the adjoining bathroom. The splash of water. The clink of glass. Heart in her throat, Samantha crept towards the door, every nerve in her body screaming danger. With trembling fingers, she pushed it open. And there, standing at the sink in a hospital gown, a beatific smile on her wasted face, was her mother. Mom? Mom? Samantha choked out, scarcely daring to believe her eyes. Victoria turned, and the light in her eyes was one Samantha hadn't seen in years. Lucid. Aware. Alive. Darling, she breathed, opening her arms. You're here. Samantha flew into her embrace, sobs tearing free from her chest. She clung to her mother like a lifeline, like the last solid thing in a world turned to quicksand. I thought I'd lost you, she wept. I thought. Shh. It's all right. Victoria stroked her hair, her touch achingly familiar. I'm here. I'm here. For a long moment, they simply held each other. Two survivors of a war they'd never asked to fight. But then Victoria drew back, her eyes clouding with sorrow. Samantha, there's something you need to know about your father. Samantha stiffened. My father? Mom, what are you talking about? He died when I was a baby. But Victoria was shaking her head, a single tear tracing down her cheek. No, my love. That's just what I wanted you to believe. Just what I had to let everyone believe. She drew in a shaky breath. The truth is, none, Sal. Your father is alive. And he's been closer than you ever realized. Understanding slammed into Samantha like a freight train, 
stealing the breath from her lungs. She staggered back, horror dawning cold and leaden in the pit of her stomach. No, she whispered, denial and revulsion thick in her throat. No, it can't be. But even as the words left her lips, she knew. It all made sickening, awful sense. The way Reginald had always watched her, his eyes tracking her every move. The thinly veiled contempt in his voice when he spoke to her. The way her mother had withdrawn, fading away before her very eyes. Reginald Montclair, the man she'd called stepfather, was no relation to her at all. He was her father. Her real father. And the monster she'd been running from her entire life. Samantha barely made it to the toilet before she was violently ill, retching until there was nothing left. Her mother knelt beside her, rubbing gentle circles on her back, murmuring words of comfort that fell on deaf ears. How could anything ever be all right again? How could she ever find her way back from this abyss? But even as despair threatened to swallow her whole, a small, fierce spark ignited in her chest. A spark of anger, of defiance. Oh, the... She was Samantha Ray. She had survived horrors that would have broken a lesser woman. She had clawed her way out of the darkness, again and again, refusing to let it claim her. And she would do it again. For her mother. For herself. For the truth. Rising on unsteady legs, she turned to face Victoria, fire in her eyes. Tell me everything, she said, and there was steel in her voice, forged in the crucible of all she had endured. From the beginning. And as her mother began to speak, the pieces of the puzzle finally falling into place. Samantha felt the first stirrings of something she'd thought lost forever. Hope. I. It was a long road ahead, winding and treacherous. There would be scars, wounds that might never fully heal. But she would walk it. She would fight. And in the end, she would reclaim her life from the ashes. One step at a time. The end.